Hey, I'm Roger Rose, and I am thrilled to be on Amber the Fangirl. You may know me from Happy Feet, I'm Superman, Ski Patrol, uh, oh, geez, I've done all sorts of Scooby-Doo. Uh, you know it, I did it, baby. Hi, guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with the ATF. My guest today is a voice actor, a promo announcer, and many many more he is the voice of many promos for you may know him as the voice of the big bang theory promos you may have seen yeah i'm oh. pretty sure i'm yeah. pretty sure do you know do you know who he is i can't i can't remember his name what's but his name my mother she knows who i am uh and your dad was a hilly rose yes my dad was a uh my both my parents were broadcasters first of all hi Hello, this is Roger uh, Rose. Are these are these sewn in your head or uh uh the headphones? Yeah. Oh, oh I thought that maybe those were your ears. Um <laughs> uh, I wish. In in the in the in the colonies. Um uh by the way, just in case you have a viewership, big viewership in, in England and the UK and all that. Because yeah. I went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. I went to RADA. You went to RADA? Yes, but it sounds way more impressive than it was. It was their summer program. My grandmother, yeah. my nice Jewish grandmother, Grammy from Miami, paid for it. And it was their summer program. So it was me and a lot of Canadians. Oh, but wow. But we went to Regent's Park and it was really cool. And the diction teacher was like cliche with a little bow tie. And he go, you Americans and Canadians ruin the English language. <laughs> and we'll try to fix you. Ta-ta-ta-ti, ta-ta-ta-to, ta 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 so, and all I wanted to do was meet a foreign girl. That's the only reason I went. Oh, boy. And I ended up meeting a girl from New Jersey. Ah, close enough. <laughs> Girls in New Jersey. How you doing? Hey, hey, how you doing? All right. Hey, hey. Oh, I'm good. I'm she good. had a better mustache than I could ever hope to have. And... <laughs> oh, um, man. Wasn't so, good. This is Roger Rose. You may know him as not just the promo, as I've just mentioned, but also voice acting. He's voiced Superman in Batman the Brave and the Bold, Doctor Strange in the Superhero Squad Show, Vinny Stoker in Gravesdale High, Four-Legged Man in The Tick, David Letterman in Pinky and the Brain and Surrounding Media, because he's known for his David Letterman impression, William North, or Captain God, William North, whichever title you prefer, in Batman Arkham Asylum and at Batman Arkham City, uh, Byron P. Fleabottom in Pound Puppies, and Roger Doctor has... Strange. Yeah. Marvel the, Super, sorry. The Superhero Squad show. Yes, my sanctum sanctorium. Yes, yes. And Roger has also done additional voices for many shows, including Rugrats, Scooby Doo, Grim Adventures, Billy and Mandy, Quack Pack, Tiny Toon Adventures, Tom and Jerry Kids, Where on Earth is Comet San Diego, Batman the Animated Series, What's New Scooby Doo, and more. A lot of games. And video games as well. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, Ooh, uh of course, here, um, one breath. Don't let me keep you up. Um, and, uh, you're not talking about any of my on camera, but that's fine. That's fine. My guess is also an on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize you. Oh yeah, you did stuff on camera. I've done like twelve movies, about thirty TV shows. Uh, you know, there's a movie called Ski Patrol, which is the one I starred in with um, George Lopez, Martin Mull. Oh wow. Jordan, Paul Feig, uh, and then uh, I did Friday the Thirteenth. You know, I was killed by Hockey Head. I did Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. Um, yeah, a lot of sitcoms. Uh, there's a great movie that I strongly recommend your listeners to rent called Comic Book the Movie. Again, I'll tell you the name: Comic Book the Movie. It's something that I produced with Mark Hamill. Uh, it's not a very good movie. It's oh. it's a mockumentary. Oh, it's made of my birth year. Nice. Oh, don't hurt me. 2004. Comic Con. Uh, Mark directed it. I produced it and starred with Mark. But everybody who's in the movie are all the famous voices from every cartoon you could ever imagine. Uh, and it's all live action. So it's like uh, Darren Norris, for, you know, uh, who's. Uh, Fairly Odd Parents. And uh, Tom Kenny and SpongeBob. Uh, and, uh, everybody. everybody. <gasps> Arlene Sorkin is in it. Harley Quinn no, has. She's been. great because we do a lot of little winks to everybody who knows animation. That's and so my cool. Favorite bits is Lori Allen, who's in SpongeBob. And she's very funny. She plays the network executive with too much um, 
uh, whatever you call that stuff is that gets rid of Botox. Botox, yeah. Okay. You can't lower her face when she talks to me. Wow, I'm going to have to watch that uh, now. And uh, oh my gosh, everybody's in it. You name it, they're in it. Any famous person. Uh, Mark, who's a good friend of mine, uh, Hamill, is um, he's very all over the place. And uh, you know who Ron Perlman is? Yeah, I've met him in person. He's a great guy. He's great. Yeah, he's doing the uh, new Transformers film, Rise of the Beasts, which is coming out. Yeah, he is Exciting. just a sweetheart of a guy, and we've done a lot of stuff together. And so I see him, and this is a mockumentary, so he's there at the thing. So I go up to him with he's with Guillermo, Guillermo del Toro, and I said to him, "Would you do this quick thing?" And he goes, "You know how he is. He goes as long as I'm not me." And I said, "Great," because it's very Christopher Guest. If you know who that is, we just sort of ad lib it. So Mark is playing a character, and I said to Mark, "Look, just don't acknowledge that it's Ron Perlman. Pretend it's anyone else." And this is on screen, so you can see this in the movie. So I go, "Ron's doing us a favor. He's going to do a bit in this. Just don't say it's him." He goes, "No problem." So he goes, and we go action, and he goes, "Ron Perlman," and Ron Perlman is looking at me, and I go, and he goes, and just you know, and, and he's going, "Ron Perlman, Ron Perlman." Uh, because my mark is all over the place with stuff and uh so it's very funny and it's on screen so ron was not happy with me <laughs> oh i see wow i'm looking at the cast though like such a good cast. debbie derryberry i've had on my show tara strong i'm good friends with her um billy west um i'm good friends with him billy uh, jim Arnell, and myself were the ones who did who made the movie i you know we we uh -huh. sort of wrote it on the fly thing is that mark is such a comic book maniac that we were going to just do a full-on comedy but uh mark wanted you know he wanted all this comic book history in it and i think it to be honest with you it ruined it it got really boring and got a lot of blah, blah, blah. but mark and billy and i are this these crazy he's just uh, I'm sorry, Jess is the cameraman. Billy is uh, this character. And the three of us, we just had the time of our lives. We had a really great time. Oh, I'm going to have to watch this now. You've inspired me. I'm oh, like, I've got to watch this. so many people. Yeah, like like Jess is in it, Tara's in it, Arlene's yeah, in it. Doing all the, 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 the Beatles stuff, you know, hey, well, yeah, he does the whole thing, the spectrum of the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, 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 indeed. Um, So you said you're friends with Mark Hamill, right? Very much so. Well, I've got a little favor I could ask you to do for me, Roger. If it's not too Everyone much. and their mother asked me to get him to, and I. It's you know, not about my podcast. Friend, if you're somebody's friend, you you know, it's they don't want to hear from you about that. But go ahead. <laughs> it's not about the podcast. I've already tried him, and it yeah. said uh, they, his, his management said if he accepts one request, he will have to accept all of them. So he just simply right. doesn't have the time. It's not about going to appear on my podcast. Yeah. It's about my documentary. Basically, right, I initially contacted his agency and I was like, okay, do you want to help me on this Bill Scott documentary? That's Bill Scott, who's a ball and close to those at home. Uh, and his agents were like, um, Mark is a huge fan of Bruce, not Bruce, but <laughs> <laughs> Bruce. You gotta stop drinking. <laughs> Oh dear. I should have not gone on that hand, Um I think because. Because I said Bruce is in Bruce Wayne because I know Mark Hamill is the Joker. Okay, let me rephrase. Whilst Mark is a huge fan of Bill, he doesn't think he can he can contribute enough, like you know, to to warrant an, warrant an interview. Um, but he wishes you well, and he look, looks forward to seeing the project once it's done. So it's finished. I've sent it to his management, but I've never had a response. So I don't know if he ever received it or not. Yeah, really. Would it yeah. be would it be possible for you to like send him my documentary? Um, I'll see what I can do. I I, I don't want to promise, but I think I could probably. Uh, what I will do is I'll text him and say, "Hey, I have this thing. Would you want to see it? How about that?" Thank you so That's much. That's his direct. You know, here here's his direct number. I can. No, I'm not gonna. Get, um, <laughs> here's his direct number. Can I tell you? Uh, uh, can I tell you a quick Mark Hamill story? Yeah, go ahead. Go I ahead. A, I have a million of them, but yeah, of course, go ahead. An idea of you're talking about getting a hold of him. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did this presentation for a TV show, which was a lot of fun. Uh huh. And we had to have a meeting, one of those typical Hollywood meetings where there's executives and all these things. And Mark is is Gandhi, you know, anybody who's Star Wars and, and he's also fantastic to his fans and he's a good guy and he's got a great sense of humor. Yeah. So we walk into this room 
And you got to remember, here's some man who, here's Luke Skywalker. So this guy's really weird and weaselly. And he sort of hardly even looks at us and he's like this. And we're talking about everything. And he goes, before we start the meeting, I would like to just say that you are the inspiration for my entire life and my entire career. And everything I've done in my life, I base on you. And Mark's like, thank you. And he goes, I have a replica of your head in the trunk of my car. Would you like to see it? Now think about that. If someone says to you, <laughs> "That's bloody creepy," I have your head in the trunk of my car in a if box. You're like, uh, and he like he goes, "That's okay. Thank you, though. Thank you." <laughs> oh damn! A million stories like that. Every time I'm with them, there's always some. Uh, I mean, I can't tell how many guys roll up their sleeve and there, there, there he is on their sleeve, and he truly appreciates it. It's not like he doesn't, but. Think about that. If someone came up to you and said, I have your head in the trunk of my car, would you like to see it? How would you react? <laughs> I, I, would, I would wish for the ground to swallow me whole. <laughs> it is really creepy. And uh, he is, I cannot say enough great things of how he is to his fans. He is, he's the person you want to meet when you meet him. And when we were at Comic-Con one time, he we were driving from the con to the hotel and every he would unroll, he would roll down the window from the car and scream out to him, "Great Obi Wan outfit!" And of course, the person would look up and go, <laughs> "You know, like, oh my God, Mark Hamill just told me it's the greatest." And you know, he would always scream out to these people. It was uh, very heartwarming. Oh, well, I really want to meet him now. Uh, he hasn't done a, a convention over here for about five years. The last one he did was Star Wars Celebration, the big one in uh, London when it was held in London well, one year. Money talks, nobody walks. Hopefully That's... next year he does it and I can whiz down to London and see yeah, him. Listen, all these guys, they love they love their fans. They really, really do. But it's like, you know, honestly, yeah. it comes down to money. It's yeah. like, why would I do this? I mean, I met Harrison Ford a couple of times Ooh. and, I, uh, and um, I said to him at the time, would he do uh, another Raiders film? Which, of course, now since then he's done it. I also have this on film. I think it might be on my site. And uh, he go. I said, I hear they'll give you uh, fifty million dollars. And he goes, fifty million. I said, yeah. He goes, so they'll just give me fifty million dollars if I do a new Raiders film. I go, that's right. He goes, okay. I said, well, don't you want to read a script? He goes, fifty million dollars, right? I go, right. He goes, I don't need a script. <laughs> I go, well, I mean, maybe it's not very good. Who cares? It's fifty million dollars. <laughs> so he was kidding around, mm, but yeah. I'm sure, you know. <laughs> yeah. By the way, just a quick uh, Harrison Ford thing, because again, I want to wave the flag if I can. Yeah, go ahead. It's really interesting. I interviewed him twice on some talk shows I did. Ooh. And off camera, he's like, hey, he's got a diamond earring. He's like, hey, how you doing? Okay, great. And three, two, one. So you're going to do this movie? Yes. So how's it going with everything? Great. What are you doing next week? I don't know. And cut. So tonight I'm going to go to the show. and So it's, it is it is. It's an ego. It's an ego. No, no, it's a character. He puts oh, on. Well, I suppose, yeah. What's an character. ego? I can't, I can't, I don't know. Excuse me. What's an ego? Oh, an ego is like you know, I'm the greatest thing in the world. Oh, right. Sorry. No, no, he's not like that. He just puts on a character so you don't get to know the real him. But yeah. the real him was fun and easygoing, and yeah, I was very impressed. Yeah, wow, that's really cool. Uh, speaking of stories, I'd like to know, well, I heard your Frank Welker story on the Airbus Weekly, but what was this What was this show that Frank recommended you for? Well, I can't tell you. No. Oh, okay, um, never mind. No, no, next question. <laughs> we're talking Hamill, we're talking um, Harrison Ford. Then we talk Frank Welker. I would say in my life... Um, there's other than my family and maybe John Ritter, Frank Welker. I'd say those are in the business, in the business, Frank Welker, number one. Yay! The oh most my. talented, the most wonderful. Uh, I'll tell you the story, but I, just to give you an idea of how talented this man is, I forget what cartoon we were doing. It might have been Tasmanian Devil. I don't remember. We did a lot of cartoons together. Uh, yeah, uh, around the time Tasmania, it could have been Gargoyles. You did those around the same Maybe time. Was, but the director said to him, okay, you have to be a unicorn. You. This is how the director described it. You Because there was no dialogue. It was just him making noise. Yeah. You jump in the air as a unicorn, and halfway in the air, 
you turn into a Brahma bull, you land and then and then attack as a Brahma bull. So again, can you tell me what a, a unicorn sounds like? Oh, that's for a magical name, like no. Well, it, unless you can show me actual video, then that's how a unicorn sounds. I don't know because the unicorn right. is basically okay, a, a bull, <laughs> right? So he's the, the director says this to him, and he be, proceeds to do it. Uh -huh. Doesn't have to do it more than once. You heard and saw a unicorn fly in the air, turn into a Brahma bull and land. You heard it all. And how does one hear? There's no such thing as a unicorn, but you heard it. And you heard the transition. You heard it all. That's how brilliant, amazing. And it, and the thing about him is, is that he usually reads books on golf or uh, airplane flying because he's reading manuals. So it's like they go, okay, Frank, you ready? He goes, okay, puts the book down, does the thing, then goes back reading the book. <laughs> the greatest guy in the world. Okay, so there's that. I just want to point that out. So to prove my point, this story. So I'm doing a movie called The Five Heartbeats, which is um, on camera, mm -hmm. where I play a, uh, I don't know if you know, you probably don't know him, Robert Townsend. It's an all black film except for me and that my name sounds movie. very familiar. I have a prop I could show you if you want. But anyway, we're this really goony, all white singing group and I'm the lead singer, you know, mm -hmm. hey, you know, this kind of thing. And, my, and they yeah. dyed my hair white because I had to be super white. Uh -huh. and, and that was the joke and everything like that. So I yeah. get a call and I get a call and they said, they want to see you at, there's this TV network called CBS. It'd be like Sky TV or BBC One. Yeah. And, uh, they need to see you. They want to talk to you about being the host of a show. Twenty thousand dollars a week um uh, and uh you know in pounds you know it's this you know I'll just say yes before the question is even finished <laughs> yeah so well they want to talk to you yeah so i have this weird white hair so i take this can so i'm just giving you an idea of how ridiculous this was yeah I took a can of like fake hair spray and it made my hair brunette because i had this goofy hair and i was going in to see this network so i walk in and it's like the thing is chipping off. It's like falling off my hair and everything. It was ridiculous. And they're like, to me, like this. And they just handed me the job. $20,000 a week, four guaranteed and all this stuff. They pull me aside and they tell me how I got this job. How does anyone get a job where you do absolutely nothing? What happened? Do you know what a screen test is by any chance? I do, yeah. I had to do one for a TV show I auditioned for. Right. So Frank Welker was screen testing to be the host of this show. So he pretty much had it. They just had to see him on camera and all this kind of stuff. They have the lights. They have the crew. They have everything going on. Frank Welker's there. The cameras are rolling. And he goes, hi, everybody. I'm Frank Welker, and this is the show. And he stops. And he goes, you know what? I'm not the guy for this. I have the guy for you. His name is Roger Rose. And they go, okay, great. But just let's finish the screen test, and then you can talk to us. No, 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 no. The guy you want for the show is Roger Rose. There's nobody better than this. This is the guy you want. Yeah, yeah, fine. But let's finish what you have to say. I'm not going to do this show. I'm not going to finish it. Call Roger Rose. Here's his phone number. Nice meeting all of you. And he gets up and he leaves in the middle the of the stage. All the executives of the network, all the producers are like, no one does that. No one. No one does that. <laughs> I show up. They go, here, here's $20,000 in four TV episodes. What? <laughs> that is Frank Welker, ladies and gentlemen. I am not worthy. Oh, what a great story. Yeah, so uh, you still got to say, what, was the show even picked up? Because I know you said you could uh, say. Was no, it was only picked up for four and then went it, right in the toilet. Ah. But I don't care. I bought my first house with that money. Oh, oh wow. So, it so what sort of show was it without basically saying what it is? Was it a compilation oh, uh, show? Was it, it a chat kids, show? kids say the darndest thing. Uh, if you know what that is. It's oh, basically an adult interview. Yeah. With kids and, ask them crazy, and they say goofy things. And so it was me with little kids. And one of the little kids was an Elvis impersonator, a man we like to call Bruno Mars. And he was like five years old, fully dressed Elvis. And it was Bruno Mars. Wow. One little, one little seven year old, I had to put him on my lap and he head, head butted me. Oh. I'm on camera going, Oh, I'm afraid blood's coming down on <laughs> you, little creep. Oh. 
Not not Bruno Mars. Would have been right. cool to see Frank Welker do it as well. You could have both done it. That would. But Frank really Welker, cool. Frank Welker was so amazing. He, I, I was lucky enough to see him do a stand up, and you know what he used to do, which was what did... scary, unbelievable. I've heard of his. Come on stage with a TV oh. set. Uh huh. So this is live. Okay. He come on stage with a TV set. Turn the volume down, and then just turn each channel, and then put in the dialogue of what anyone or anything was saying. So he would turn to the channel and just make a. It was. Unbel- I mean, there's nobody more talented than him. He is truly genius level. And you know what else? The nicest man, the most giving, warm. When he you do a voice, he'd say, that's good. You know what? Add a little of this. And you go, oh my God. He would teach you. He would, what? Oh, I could just go on and on and on. You ever see him in that Elvis movie, speaking of Elvis? I was going to say, yeah. I was gonna, can you imagine if he was with Bruno Mars and he's like Elvis and he'd be like, oh, yeah, it was a mm-hmm. film with Elvis. Have you seen that Elvis movie? It's terrible. It's just awful. Oh, well, the name of it. I thought Have it was only it? good because Frank was in it. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Elvis was already, it was already there. And, and, and Frank, they basically just said, just let Frank go. And he just, you know, he's doing his thing and Elvis is like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. I, I have a good story about uh, Frank. Um, yeah. Elvis used to love his choking dog impression. So oh, yeah. he'd ask him to do it. And then I was like, hey, see this guy who was choking dog. <laughs> Very, like, nice oh. Very nice impression. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, because he said it in an interview once. I have to try and dig out the clip somewhere. But, oh, you just made me feel all warm inside. Well, it's only I can only tell you, I mean, I'll, I'll be happy to knock certain celebrities for you that are not nice people. But it doesn't get better than him. A uh, quick Elvis story, because I know England is very big on Elvis. Oh, yeah, and I yeah. have a lot of Elvis stories. I never met the man, but I, I was a little too young. But I'm a little younger than Frank. But I did uh, go with Jerry Schilling, who was Elvis's best friend. And if you saw the movie, he, there's a Jerry Schilling character. He was Elvis's cousin. Oh, yeah. And Schilling took me to Graceland. I was very lucky. And he took me into the TV room and he opened this drawer. And in there was all these, uh, I don't know if you know, the first records that were made were what's called 78s, where these old, you know, those those things yeah and he had all these 78s of gospel music and whenever elvis would record he'd play these 78s and then he showed me these and it was so cool there's dust over them and everything and it was really neat wow thank you daddy i did uh johnny bravo you know that cartoon oh yeah yeah jeff bennett was johnny jeff bravo. Bennett. yes yeah. i was i was his best friend the chimp oh and, uh, wow and, uh, i love that cartoon favorite Favorite episode was the, uh, I think it was the first episode. It was May Whitman, if you know May. Oh, yeah. Door of Pat music. Yeah. And the voice actress in our own, right, as well. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and me and Bennett. And uh, there's double entendres. It may be too young for you, but he gets shot to the island of beautiful men. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember that. So it's like, you know, his chimp. And he gets shot there. And this guy, this Roman guy, with a t- he goes, welcome to the island of beautiful men. And then. And he goes, I'll get you a towel. And then Johnny Bravo turns to the camera and goes, uh-oh. And then that just cuts off. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was very funny. <laughs> I loved him. Oh, amazing. he's great. Yeah. Right. Have you have you worked with uh, Corey Burton by any chance? Yes, I did a, uh, uh, was it Quack Pack? No, uh, DuckTales, where he's Grandpa Mc... Scrooge or whatever it is. Oh, uh, uh, oh yeah. Alan Young was Scrooge my dog. Uh, but, but it's okay because I, I know where the confusion lies because I used to think the same thing. I would confuse well, He came Ludwig, in and Ludwig von Drake. That's it. There you go. See? Yeah. It, it's a confuse me as well. Don't worry. I'm very honored because um when I started, I started when I was about 18. My voice teacher. My age. Uh, uh, there you go. Don't hurt me. Uh, well, but see, now you can start. Um, I've already you, started. I've, no, I've done a few voice roles. Um, oh, really? Done a coin-operated ride up there. And I've also done a theme park ride. Nice. Let's hear the voice. Uh, well, the helicopter says, Heli to tower, come in tower. That was pretty much just my normal voice. And then the theme park ride. Uh, Press Stella, she sort of talks a bit like that. Um, and Apple, she talks a bit like that, like a snobby teenager. I can't say too nice. much because of NDAs, but hopefully they don't sue me. Oh, no, they won't. They, they say they will, but, you know, I just, uh, yeah. uh, what was I going to say? Um, I, my voice teacher was Dawes Butler, if you know who <gasps> Of course I do. I love Dawes Butler so and, much. Yeah, he was, he was my voice teacher. And then I, he got me into Hanna-Barbera at the very end. So all those people were there. Alan Young. 
Don Messick. And <clears throat> I'll tell you another quick little story, if I may. Yeah, go I ahead. Like all these kind of stories about these people. I love them. I love them. So I was your age, a little, a little older. I was 20. And um, they brought the Jetsons back. I did the Jetsons. Movie. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. And it was done in the 60s, I think. So yeah. this was the late 70s. A mid 80s, I think it was. 80s, okay. So everyone in that movie was alive. but Oh, no, old. the movie was made in 1990 or released in 1990, but recorded oh, okay. in 89. So everyone was very old. They were all next to death. This is an absolute true story. They had the ambulance waiting outside if anyone got sick. The guy who played George Jetson, Jetson he George was there. And they, yeah, and they would have to bring him up and he couldn't read the, he had gone blind. I don't mean to be mean. So they would have him in another room. But everybody else, Mel Blank, Mel Blank was uh, the boss. So it, there was Mel Blank. Uh, Benny Young. Singleton, Janet Waldo. They were all there and they were all old. Those had already you know, died by the time. They were the, youngest, the youngest person there was Janet Waldo. She was in her 50s. Penny Singleton had dentures. So when she talked, they clip and clap. And then my teacher was Elroy Jetson, who was in his 70s and partially paralyzed from a stroke. Anyway, so first thing I do is I go up to, uh, uh, um, what's his face? Uh, Mel Blank. Now, we know who Mel Blank is, right? Of course and I, I do. Go, and I go, uh, excuse me, Mr. Blank? You remember, I'm your age. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Blank, and he goes, Ugh. he takes out an envelope, pulls out this picture and goes, what's your name? I say, Roger. He writes down to Roger Mel Blank, right? So... Uh, that I, you know, that, I keep that there. It's funny. I, I didn't I haven't thought about that. Yeah. Just, oh yeah, Frank Welk was on that series as well because uh, Orbity was, was in. But all the old guys, all the old old guys. Yeah. Were the there. So Dawes Butler is in his seventies. He's partially paralyzed, and he has to play a five year old boy. Now I don't know if you remember what Elroy Jetson sounded like, but he sounded a bit like this sort of. Yeah, well, actually, he sounded more like this. Yeah, well, I can't do it because yeah. I'm not a male, no, no, so I, I can't. Yeah. But, but here's I the thing: there's a seventy-something-year-old man partially paralyzed in there, and but before they start to roll, <laughs> all these people coughing and clapping, and they go, "And action, gee, Dad, it's great to be here." And you're like, and then they go, <laughs> "Cut!" Try then, not to laugh. <laughs> Everyone's talking about Mel Blake has a spit barrel, clipping and clapping. The end of this story. It's sad. So we finish, and uh, the great director, Andrea Romano. Who oh, was, I love time, her so much. I admire her. Friend, you had her on? She's yeah. Incredible. I haven't had her on. She, she says she doesn't do podcasts, but she probably doesn't. I can't anyway, she, like, get her on, but I talk to her assistant. email sometimes. She was an assistant at the time. and oh, yeah. they, Gordon Hunt. Right. I think, and yeah. She, and so the guy who played uh, Jets, George Jetson laid George down O'Hanlon. and then died in, on the couch there. Before they finished uh, the last Not part, how? but he was like close to 80 and very sick. So, but they got everybody, but it was very funny because it would just be like everybody was right there. And then the minute they'd say cut, you <laughs> know, oh, yeah, I think I heard of that story. Like he did his lines and then he just and he died. He went to take keel, a nap on the couch, keeled on over his couch. And no, no, he said, I got, I'm tired. I need to. Oh, I thought, I thought he like healed over in the actual studio itself. That's what I always thought. No, he went into her office, laid down on her couch and, and never woke up. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, isn't, isn't Andrea retired? Yeah, she's retired. Yes. She's from Mexico. Oh, Andrea, she had some uh, eye health thing and uh, her farewell party was pretty amazing. Uh, it was a few years ago, right before COVID. And I mean, everybody was there. It would be like your dream night, including oh. Al and uh, Where the, oh, I thought the my documentary was so nice. I yes, and they all got up and we and all said stuff. And uh, Hamill was hysterical. Hamill, we hadn't seen each other in a while, and he was asking me all sorts of dirty things about certain people. <laughs> and finally, if you know who Lorraine Newman is, she had to tell us to shut up. And Tom King goes. What's going on? And I go, well, Mark didn't know about some oh. sex thing about somebody. And, and and he goes, everyone knows that. And Mark is like, because he, he talks like Jiminy Glick, who's Mark. Drake. I didn't know. <laughs> oh, man, you're making me jealous. I wish I was there. Well, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it would be really good to have on my podcast. So that she has so many stories because obviously she's just voice straight to the Jetsons. She does, but, but she, Batman, the animated yeah, series. She, yeah. she, I, I was, she, I'm honored that she put me in. She made me Superman. So I'm one of the 10 Warner Brothers Superman. She Yay. put me in Batman. And that's where I first met Mark. And I have to tell you, uh, on the genius level, when Mark does uh, animation and I've done 10 different cartoons with him, mm -hmm. he's brilliant. He's also brilliant in the 
genius level. I, the commitment Yay. he makes to the Joker is like his veins are popping out of his head. His face is turning purple, and it's pretty amazing. <laughs> oh, what about uh, Arlene Sorkin? Are you friends with her as well? I only met her at the a Comic Con with uh, with uh, uh, Mark. She a was comic book there. film. Yeah, yeah, I only met her there, so I really don't know her. She was very nice. Loves Mark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's she's his pudding. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That comic book film was released um, just over two weeks just before I was born. Literally. Really? Because we yeah. did. It in, did you see the dedication we give to you? What? No. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> who, um, um, do you know who Jonathan Winters or Sid Caesar was? You probably don't. I uh, Sid Caesar sounds familiar. Of course, I know who Jonathan Winters is. Well. Uh, I was lucky enough to know Jonathan Winters and I got him for the movie and Sid Caesar was one of the original comedy geniuses. He goes way back before, like probably before your parents' time. He's the first improv actor from like the first SNL, not SNL, but before that. Yeah. And he and Jonathan Winters starred together in It's a Mad, 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 Mad World in the 1950s. Oh, that's where I know. Yeah, yeah. Again, I catch all these guys when they're about to croak. So winters was kind enough to get us um sid caesar and there's a scene in comic book the movie with me billy west jess arnell and jonathan winters and uh sid caesar and it's just crazy it's so much fun and sid caesar was famous for doing dialects so you know he go oh, you know so sid caesar and jonathan winters said to us kid we don't care what your movie's about. We don't care what your scene is about. We're going to do what we're famous for, and you act around us. And we're like, okay. And Jonathan Winters grabs me, since you know who he is, and oh, my God. And he picks me up like this because he was real tall. And he goes, this is where it gets fun, kid. I'm like, <laughs> you know, he puts me down and just goes. Oh. <laughs> so much fun. So cool. Oh, that's a lovely story. Uh, so, Roger, I'd like to talk to you about your voiceover roles specifically for well like you know brave and the bold you were Batman, one of the brave and bold yes one of the supermen alongside people like george newburn and tim daly and who voices him in the in the new film that's coming out i think it might be travis willingham is I it think. i thought it was um Oh, I was thinking of the one with the super pets. Oh, yeah, the super pets. Now, this is the new animated one that's coming out. Uh, um, I think Nolan North is in it. Yeah. Oh, Batman Brave and Bold was... Batman so and Superman, fun. Battle of the Super Sons, that's it. I don't yeah. have it with me, but there's a picture of me when I'm uh, eight years old. Yeah, it's Travis Willingham. Yeah. I'm eight years old when I'm in my Superman outfit. And when I was uh, only eight, not now, I would wear my Batman under uh, outfit under my clothes. Oh. Anyway, and so uh, the producer, that uh, you probably know his name, really good guy, the writer, producer, can't think of his name right now. Anyway. Of I Brave and that. Bold. Yeah, and uh, most of the Superman, uh, Batman movies. Anyway, I brought him that picture because Andrea Romano put me in that. And uh, he was really touched by that because, you know, it's like living out a dream. And uh, Kevin Michael Richardson was Lex Luthor, who is a, also a good pal of mine. You, have you had Kevin on? I've tried, but he's just exceptionally mm -hmm. busy. And he's only given really press interviews at the moment because of how he's busy his so schedule is. He's one of the nicest, warmest guys. I went to his house for lunch a little while ago, and there's Clancy Brown. Oh my God, the other Lex Luthor <laughs> from uh, Superman: The Animated myself, Series. Trying to keep myself cool, not you know, like I know who you are. Oh no, it's okay. Uh, we can all fun go. I mean, we can well, all fanboy my like, world. You know, we try to be cool. And uh, uh, there was, um, well, this again is probably too old a story. There's a very famous movie called The Birds. Do you know The Birds? It's Alfred Hitchcock. It's from the 1950s. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. Nah, I don't want to tell that story. It's not worth it. But anyway, it was really fun to be Superman, you know, citizen. Uh, so it was cool because I got to be, uh, you know, iconic character and uh, yeah. really, really neat. And, and for, as far as Batman is concerned, I did Batman Ark Asylum. But I've been also very lucky because I got to meet like Adam West bef before he died. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Arlene was on a, in Arkham Asylum as well as Harley Quinn. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, carry on. Sorry. No, oh, and I just, and I was able to say some Batman dialogue and he repeated it to me, which was really cool. Oh. And other, other, I had the luck of meeting some other Batmans. So it's been, uh, and then I actually just doubled um, Will Arnett on some game. That, that is a throat ripper because you have to 
talk in this kind of way. Yeah. And uh, uh, there's very few voice actors I've met who don't, who have steel throat. Fred Tattashore has a steel throat. Billy West, you've had him on, right? Um, I had him on, but I nearly passed out during the filming. So we're going to have to refilm it again. Nearly passed out because of his amazing talent or? Um, I've actually passed out because it turns out I had COVID. It was my second bout of COVID that made oh, me pass oh, out. Yeah. Well, or, well Billy yeah. said, sweetheart but we are raging all the time that's the first time i've ever had to cancel an interview like halfway yeah. through oh my god i felt no, so fair. awful he uh he's got a steel throw except he ended up doing popeye up in canada oh and we making, uh, comic book the movie we had to pick him up at the airport oh okay. i ever saw him with like losing his voice because because he had to you know do popeye and i guess after doing it for three days straight it ripped his throat out yeah because you know, it's a human thing it is a muscle yeah yeah, so uh, it can. So Fred Tattashore is the only guy I've ever known because he does every zombie monster thing you could ever imagine. And I remember going into some movie, uh, some game, and he comes out and sweating and bleh, And I go, how is it? He goes, it's pretty bad. And I went, oh, my God, if Fred's voice is gone, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you can see it from here. I put my uh, phone flashlight on. Can you see who I'm with up there? Uh, I can see the phone. Up at the top here. No, you got to go closer to the camera. Mm, I can't get any closer, but uh, aha, I know what I'm going to do. I have a picture of it on my phone. Well, all I'm going to say is that it's DC related. Uh, maybe a bit of Superman, maybe a bit of Brave from the Bold. Maybe, I don't know, but okay. hey. Right, okay. I just have to quickly find it because it's somewhere in my four forty thousand calories. Yes, I have that much <laughs> you Don't tell judge. Me what it is. Uh aha, it's a picture of me and oh oh how sorry. <laughs> I just got jump scared. Um the video the, the meeting of that we just did was just finished converting, it just popped up with the tab. I was like, oh hang on, what's going on? Where have you, where have you gone? <laughs> um it's a picture of me, Wilfrey Dell and Kevin Conroy. Wow. You can't really see that. Oh, wow, very nice. The, the there we go. That's so that was taken cool. just this April, gone. We yeah. were, I met them in the, at the Welsh Comic Con Telford takeover. They very, were super very talented cool. people. Extremely talented people. No way, you know? And that's what spawned my Batman phase, my obsession, hyperfixation with Batman the Animated Series. So um, Wilfred Dell's going to be on my show this autumn. I'm trying to get Kevin Conroy for it as well. But oh, I am excited. Like, He's amazing. Uh, you know who's really a cool guy? I know I could. I, I, who plays Robin, Lauren Lester. Yeah, Lauren Lester, yeah. Lauren, and his uh, daughter is Julia Lester. Who she's an actress doing, now, yeah. She's doing High School the Musical the Musical, and she's on Broadway currently right now in Into the Woods. Yeah, yeah, he's following in her dad's footsteps. I tried to get Lauren, but he just, they just said he's... They didn't say anything too specific. You want to get said... Lauren? I could get you Lauren. His daughter, his other daughter, he has three daughters. His other daughter is my daughter's childhood best friend. They're best friends from day one. Oh, all the time because it, like, it would be an honor. Yeah, I've Lauren's done. on uh, Broadway tour right now on the bands. Oh, is he on Broadway as well? Something like that. Yeah, he's on. He's on the t Broadway tour. You know, around the United States. Yeah, the bands visit. Bands visit. Wow, that's so cool. Wow, so like father, like daughter, both on Broadway at the moment. That's so bad. cool. Bless them. Yeah. Oh. Julia is insanely talented. I know I've I've seen her like perform and stuff like I've seen videos and it's just amazing how like she's literally followed in her dad's footsteps. She would be good to have on the show as well. Yeah, maybe uh, one she's, day. But you're not gonna get her right now. She's nah, she's busy. too insanely busy. Yeah. yeah, wish I was busy. To be fair, <laughs> you're yeah. doing fine. Oh, it, thank you. you. Doing this, you're very and you have those cool headphones. Oh, thank you, thank need. you, Roger. But yeah, it would be an honor to have Lorraine on my show. But thank you, Roger. I appreciate it. <laughs> A uh, final question I want to ask you. Now, we probably might have to do a part two because we haven't really covered everything of yours. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It depends. It, it depends. You, you don't have to do a part two. I don't know, but I, we'll talk. I am but here to serve you. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll, we'll think about it. Well, no, think about it. Yes, we'll definitely do it. I mean, we'll talk about arranging a date. And we have it. Yeah. Well, I know you would like me again. Yeah, of course. So, Roger, I'd like to round off this podcast with a little question. What's your favorite pizza topping? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the Chicagoland area. 
Yeah. And you know anything about the U.S.? Chicago is known for its pizza, not New York pizza. But my favorite pizza topping. Uh, well, I don't eat meat, but I love the the. When I go to Chicago, I eat the red meat. Uh, mm-hmm. so. Well, I'm gonna go olives. Good choice. Maybe, maybe even green olives. But I have but pizza, but here's my favorite pizza topping. Uh-huh. The sauce. The sauce has to be that's the secret to Chicago pizza. You've hit you've hit my Chicago is known for its hot dogs and its pizza sauce. And it's pizza, I mean. And uh I told you before we started that my fan uh, most of my family lives in uh in the suburbs of London. Yeah. So we all appreciate a good za. By the way, that's the the term for pizza in the Midwest of of the United States. You're going to go out and get some za? Anyway, but the secret to a good pizza is the pizza sauce. Most, nothing personal, but in England, wherever, they use like a ragu. It's like, you know, out of the jar. Yeah. You want to you wanna put on extra sauce on your pizza. And that's even if you're making it at home. But you have the the right kind of sauce, which is, you know, it's got a thick, it's got a little bit of an oregano, a little bit of a kick, a little bit of spice. And then it makes the whole pizza rock and roll. And not the deep dish pizza out of Chicago, the thin square pizza. Uh, let me drop a celebrity name here. Let me pick it up. Jane Lynch. You know Jane? Yeah. Jane and I hail from the Chicago land area, you know, bang, bang, Al Capone. Mm-hmm. And whenever Jane and I get together, we go deep into the Chicago accent. We've done cartoons together. We've done some TV shows together. And she goes, hey there, Reg, how the heck are you? I go, well, for Christ's sakes, Jane, I went over to the Amato's Pizza the other day. I had some great sauce. She goes, holy Jiminy, Reg, I know exactly what you're talking about. You got a little slice here, a little za, and some of that spicy uh, bubbling stuff, and you got yourself an evening with a little TCO, a tall chili one, which would be a brewski. Anyway, that's you asked a Chicago question. I gave you a Chicago answer. Thank you, Roger. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think I made you do like all I want to know is your topping, and you gave me a five hour story. Anyway, yes. <laughs> no, it's okay. Mine is uh, if you want to know, it's cheese. I don't like any toppings. Wimp. No, that's good. That's good. What kind of cheese? <gasps> uh, mozzarella. You know, nothing personal, but England. The, Pizza Sorry, you can say it. We're all friends here. You, they just, they, everything is, I did a TV show there. British yeah, people are weird. It's called Renford Rejects. Sounds uh, familiar. It, it's a kid show uh, about soccer and I came in. I sort of did a Ted Lasso kind of, but it was on, um, I think it was on Sky. And I was there for two weeks and I got yelled at because every time they would put so much cheese on all my food and I didn't want all this cheese. And so they yelled at me. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Adam McLeodian over here. Well, and I'm looking at the cast. I have never heard of any of these people before. <laughs> I'm literally just looking at the actors. I'm on an episode. I play the sleazy agent. It was fun. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, wow. I had a lot of... Oh, wow. James Corden was on it at one point. Wow. That is so cool. Wow. People... Rent wow. Free. It's a good show. I'll definitely check it out. Definitely. That's about uh, football. Yeah, I just had a look. It was on Nickelodeon. Ted Lasso before Ted Lasso without the amazing writing and talent. Yeah, of course. Mm, yeah. So, Roger, thank you so much for joining me on my little YouTube show. Mm-hmm. Where can we find you on social media? Do you have a website? Rogerose.com and uh, Twitter at the Roger Rose. Uh, same with uh, same with all media. It's at the Roger Rose and. Uh, and then uh, my website, rogerrose.com. Wonderful. So to you at home, thank you so much for watching this interview. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Stay safe, stay happy, be kind, and be As kind to yourself. And happy feet, I eat you with ketchup, my little cupcake. <laughs> thank you for watching, everybody. Bye and cut. <laughs> <laughs>